二零二零年第十條題目係有關於人類嘅繁殖嘅，下面有兩幅圖。第一幅圖咧就係、是、顯示咗受精作用當中人類精子同埋卵子嘅顯微照片，而第二幅圖就係顯示咗人類精子放大部分嘅電子顯微照片。咁所以你見到到個精子嘅頭部啦，同埋佢嘅中段嘅。咁啊都係嗰句啦，有翻一個良好習慣啦，見到有任何嘅嘢就做咗 labeling 先啦。Q 嘅呢一部分咧就係、是、精子嘅中段。入面嘅細胞器呢，就係、是、mitochondria 線粒體啦。咁啊入題目咯 ，Part A 呢，佢就問啦：喺正常情況底下，圖一所顯示嘅過程即係受精作用啦，喺雌性生殖系統嘅邊一個構造去進行呢？咁呢個題目啦，自不然就係考返成個受精作用嘅過程，同埋喺雌性嘅繁殖系統邊一個位置去進行呢？咁自不然啊，就係呢輸卵管。咁今次呢，考評局嘅答案呢，都叫做較為誒簡單嘅，就係、是、講輸卵管。睇翻書本咧，其實有一個更加準確嘅位置嘅，就係、是、輸卵管嘅上部啊。咁你可以寫嘅就係 upper parts of the ovary 就啦。嗱，咁今次條題目咧就用長題目嘅方式去問啫。下次咧就俾翻啲 M C 你啦，可能咧就問翻你咯。哦 ，A 咧就係陰道口啦 ，B 咧就係子宮頸啦 ，C 咧就係子宮啦，而 D 咧就係輸卵管嘅上部啦。咁啊，俾你揀翻 A、B、C、D 邊一個嘅答案咯。而呢條題目嘅變奏呢，亦都可以問下你啦。咁究竟個精子係點樣去向住嗰個卵子去進發，去做受精作用嘅呢？精子除咗自己游水之外啦，咁其實呢，精子都係會受到子宮啦，同埋輸卵管嘅肌肉嘅外壁呢嘅一個蠕動嘅作用呢，去推佢哋嘅。而下次咧，可能又有另一啲題目去問你咯，就係、是、就當睇病學 bio disease approach 啦。哦，可能啦，有一對夫婦咧，本身咧就係透過正常性交咧，係唔能夠去懷孕嘅。哦，咁係一個不正常情況底下啦，佢就問翻：咦，如果我係將佢哋嘅精子同埋卵子擺喺個培養碟嗰度去做個受精嘅話，呢、这個係咩過程啊？呢、这個咪就係體外受精 in vitro fertilization 啦，係咪？跟住去到 part B 啦，就睇翻第二幅圖。細胞器 Q 對於精子嘅功能有咩嘅重要性？嗱，又嚟講重要性咧，即係話啦，細胞器 Q 嘅出現對個精子嘅功能有咩嘅好處咯？咁呢條題目啦，自不然就考翻啦。咁究竟 Q 係咩先？哦，線粒體啦。啊 ，Q 有咩用啊？就係、是、咧，就係、是、透過呼吸作用去釋放能量啦，係咪？咁線粒體有咩用啊？就係、是、透過去進行呼吸作用去釋放能量啦。咁所以你起碼要寫出釋放能量。咁但係關個精子咩事先？精子有咩用啊？精子要游水去尋找個卵子去進行受精作用啊嘛。咁即係話啦，提供能量俾精子去游水啦。咁呢個呢，就係加返個 for 字，就係去建立返個功能性關係啦。咁過往啲題目其實都有問過下一啲。功能啊，或者功能性關係嘅嘢嘅，咁啊，無論係血管嘅結構同佢嘅功能啦，啊葉綠體嘅唔同嘅部分，佢哋嘅功能之間嘅關係啦，咁其實呢都係考緊同一樣嘅嘢嘅啫。跟住我就拍試啦，就要解釋下精子同埋卵子嘅染色體數目。對於有性繁殖嘅重要性，又係問重要性，即係話啦，人類嘅精子同埋卵子，佢哋嘅染色體數量，對於佢哋進行有性繁殖，究竟有啲咩嘅好處？點解要咁樣做呢？咁起碼我哋知道啦，受精作用咧就係精子卵子嘅結合啦。而精子卵子有咩咁特別呢？佢哋咧就係一個單倍體嚟嘅。所以啦，佢哋得廿三條嘅染色體啦。咁當受精作用嘅時候啦，廿三加廿三就有翻一個雙倍體，四十六條染色體嘅情況出現啦。係今次咧，我對考評局嘅答案咧都有少少唔滿意，因為啦，能夠令到個染色體數量變翻雙倍體，你話係咪真係一個重要性？我覺得佢只係一個現象嚟嘅啫。真正嘅重要性係下面嗰句嗱，其實個答案都有嘅，不過咧佢就當咗染色體數量能夠復原翻去翻雙倍體都已經當係重要性啦。我覺得真正嘅答案係後面嗰句，就係、是、容許到人類佢係能夠喺代與代之間都係保持到一個常數嘅染色體數量，即係話啦，阿爸阿媽嗰輩佢哋有四十六條啦，去到個仔個輩又係四十六條啦，仔再生佢個仔嘅話咧，粒酸啊！都係四十六條嘅染色體嘅，係最基本啦。你起碼噏得出咧，染色體數量係能夠復原翻去雙倍體先。但去到第二部分咧，就叫我哋簡述一下受精作用之後，究竟同卵雙胎咧係點樣去形成嘅咧？咁呢條題目啦，其實就考翻我哋咧，同卵雙生
同埋二卵相生嘅概念有咩唔同咯？尤其是系喺同卵相胎啦，系咪？咁我哋会发现啦，其实咧当中都系一精一卵嘅结合啦。呢、這个盒子进行有丝分裂 （mitotic cell division） 去形成胚胎嘅时候咧，咁其实过程当中就真系将佢一开二就分开咗啦，就变成咗两个咧基因上系完全一样嘅胚胎。而呢兩個胚胎各自就成為咗一個個體啦。咁呢兩個咧就係媽妹或者係媽仔啦。趁住呢個機會咧，又想提翻大家呢一個邏輯上面嘅問題啦。龍鳳胎必然係二卵相生，但係二卵相生唔一定係龍鳳胎。咁啊，因為啦，即使佢係兩粒卵、兩粒精子嘅結合，但係話唔定兩粒精子都係 carry 住 X 嘅染色體或者係 Y 嘅染色體。咁即係話啦，即使係二卵相生呢，佢仍然係有機會生得到媽仔或者媽女嘅。但如果我話俾你聽，佢必然係一仔一女係龍鳳胎嚟㗎啦。我哋向後推嘅話呢，佢哋必然係二卵相生啦。好，又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目呢，就由配子开始嘅。咁下次呢，可能又问返你精子或者卵子嘅适应性特征啦，係咪？记得返 S F F 嘅呢个概念整合法啦。咁呢个方法呢，係可以帮到大家去溫书啦，整合返好多有关于身体嘅器官啦，同埋佢哋嘅功能啦之间嘅关系嘅。咁跟住啦，条题目呢，就再问返受精作用啦，同埋染色体嘅数目啦。先去讲一讲嘅咩先啊？配子呢，当佢哋进行受精作用嘅时候，会受到啲咩嘅挑？戰咧，例如啦，精子咧去到陰道嘅時候咧，就有機會受到佢嘅酸性分泌物所殺死啦，即俾陰道嘅分泌物咧去纏繞住 trap 住咗啦，咁啊去唔到子宮，亦都唔會去得到輸卵管去揾到個卵子啦。又或者啦，個女性嘅身體嘅體温太高啦，有機會殺死咗啲精子啦。又或者啦，佢精子咧發育不良啊，或者 e m o t o r 即係喐唔到啊，條尾太短啊，或者佢嗰個頭係爛爛地啊，其實咧都係導致到咧佢係進行唔到受精。作用嘅，咁所以呢个情况底下咧，又去到睇病学拜屙咯，就系、是、解释翻咧，点解一对夫妇佢哋会不育或者所谓嘅不人症啦。啱啱我所讲嘅咧，就系精子所会面对一啲挑战嘅情况啦。咁去到女性啦，其实都有机会嘅，例如啦，女性嘅雌性荷尔蒙不足啦，就导致到啦，佢唔能够令到个子宫内壁啦 keep 住一个好厚嘅厚度，呢、這个胚胎去做一个植入啦。呢啲情况咧，咁我哋就要谂下点样解决咯。例如跟住啦。配置同埋染色体数量咧，我哋就要温翻书咯，减数细胞分裂啦。开始啦，一个配置嘅制造细胞，即系制造精子嘅细胞，佢哋系双配体嘅。但系制造咗精子之后咧，就系、是、单配体。点解精子或者卵子呢啲配置要单配体啊？喂，精卵结合做咗受精作用之后咧，我哋嘅下一代就能够维持翻一个双配体嘅数目啊嘛，系咪？咁当中啦，又有睇病学拜哦噃。啊，如果啦，我哋咧去制造精子卵或者卵子嘅时候咧，有任何嘅突变，例如啦。染色體突變，例如啦個卵子咧多咗一條染色體，例如多咗第廿一對嘅染色體，咁加埋之後咧就唔係四十六條染色體咯，就變咗四十七條染色體啦。咁呢個咧就係唐氏綜合症啦。跟住啦，再去多一步呢，就問埋單卵相生同埋二卵相生啦。我哋可以比較下佢哋嘅性別啦，又或者比較下有冇咩嘅變異啦。哦，遺傳嘅因素啊，環境嘅因素啊，都會導致到啦。即使你哋係單卵相生，或者我哋去研究下單卵相生同埋二卵相生佢哋所面對嘅變異啦，同卵相胎呢，佢哋嘅基因呢係一模一樣嘅。咁但係有陣時佢哋都會顯示到唔同嘅特性喎，咁我哋就要解釋下環境因素啦，究竟對同卵雙胎啦會產生啲咩嘅影響啦。Diagram one shows the photo micrograph of the human sperm and a human ovum during fertilization, and diagram two shows an electron micrograph of an enlarged view of the human sperm. So you can see the head of the sperm and the middle piece of the sperm. So you can see the organelle cube in the middle piece. So they are the mitochondria. For part A, under normal circumstance, in which structure of the human reproductive system does the process fertilization shown in diagram one take place? So we need to recall the process of the fertilization and recall the exact position where the fertilization takes place. So in the answer is a bit simple one in the oviduct. And actually, we know the exact position where the fertilization takes place from the textbook. It is the upper part of the oviduct. It is the site of fertilization. This year is asked you in long question format. 
But maybe next time it can ask you in an AMC question format. For example, oh, so for ABCD, four choices, which part uh, of the female reproductive system does the fertilization take place? So you can see that oh, for the A, the opening of the vagina, B is the surface, and C is the uterus, and the D is the upper part of the oviduct. So you can choose ABCD. Obviously, the answer is D. And the possible question variation, it could be ask you to state how do the sperms move towards the ovum for fertilization. Clearly, the sperm they can swim because they are motile, and their movement is also helped by the peristaltic contraction of the muscular wall of the uterus and the oviduct. Another question variation, it can ask you about the abnormal circumstance. For example, a couple they are suffering from the infertility. So can we help them? So we can extract the ovum and the sperm uh, to and then to put them on the petri dish for the fertilization. So it is the case for the in vitro fertilization or what we say that the test to baby. The fertilization takes place outside the human body. And then for part B, with reference to the diagram 2, what is the significance of the organelle mitochondria to the sperm's function? Therefore, we need to mention the benefit of having organelles Q to the sperm's function. Therefore, we need to identify organelles Q first, they are the mitochondria. And what is the function of the organelles Q? So they are the main site of energy releasing stage of the respiration. Therefore, we need to talk about the organelles Q surprise energy and the function of the sperm. They swim and search the ovum for fertilization. That means the organelles kill, they provide energy for the sperm to swim. So we use the preposition for to show the functional relationship. In the past, there are different questions ask you the functional relationship or the structure to the function. For example, we talk about the corpus collaboration for the stroma, for the phalagoi, how could they cooperate with each other? And for the blood vessels, how can their structures help them to perform a particular function? And for part C1, explain the significance of the chromosome number of the sperm and ovum to sexual reproduction. So for the sperm and ovum, they have a certain chromosome number. What is the benefit for them to carry out the sexual reproduction? So for the sexual reproduction the critical process is the fertilization fields of the one sperm and one egg and then you can see that for the sperm and egg after the um, say so you need to recall the meiotic cell division concept because the chromosome number of the sperm and egg they are haploid only one set of chromosome therefore after fertilization the diploid number of chromosome can be restored so in this question although it is regarded as the answer. However, I think that deployed number of chromosome number can be restored is just a phenomenon. But what is the benefit? The benefit is that it allows the human being to preserve a constant number of chromosome from generation to generation. Therefore, I prefer this statement as the answer. Constant chromosome number from generation to generation is maintained. Okay, and for part C2, briefly describe how identical twins may arise after fertilization. For the concept checking, we need to distinguish identical twins from the fraternal twins. And then we need to recall the process of the fertilization to produce identical twins and the fraternal twins or the non-identical twins. So you can see that at the very beginning, one ovum is fertilized by one sperm and one cycle is formed. And when this cycle grows by the mitotic cell division into embryo, resulting in the cells which are genetically identical. And the embryo is really split into two embryos with identical genetic composition at a certain stage. Therefore, for the identical twins, they are genetically identical. And I would like to grab this chance to clarify the concept of the fraternal twins. So one boy, one girl as the twins, they must be the fraternal twins. However, it doesn't mean that for the fraternal twins, they must have different sex. They could be the same sex. For example, even there are two ova and then two sperms fertilizing them. So maybe one sperm containing X chromosome and the other sperm containing X chromosome as well. Therefore, although they are fraternal twins, both of them are 
girls. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the gamut and it also asks you that uh, what are the importance of having the organelle skill, the mitochondria, for the sperm's function. So therefore, you can recall this method, the SFF method for the revision structure they have a certain feature to perform a certain functions and the question asks us about the fertilization and the chromosome number for the gametes any challenge they are facing for example the sperm some of the sperm they are trapped by the mucus or killed by the acidity of the vagina and the body temperature of the female is too high for the sperm and some sperms are defective and immortal therefore it's very difficult for them to reach the ovida and find the egg for the fertilization and then we can also talk about the disease approach not only for the male but also for the female so apart from the sperms or for the male they face a challenge even for the female for example they cannot secrete enough amounts of the female sex hormone for example estrogen therefore the thickness of the uterine lining is not thick enough for the implantation of the embryo so all the situation it will need to the infertility so therefore, how can we help them? For example, the in vitro fertilization. And then for the gametes and the chromosome number, we can talk about the meiotic cell division. So for the sperm producing cell, they are diploid. But for the sperm, they are haploid. So what's the significance of it? Because after fertilization, sperm and egg fuse together, so we can have the diploid cycle again. To maintain the constant chromosome number from generation to generation. And we can also talk about the disease approach. So for example, in the egg, there is one more chromosome in the 21st chromosome. Therefore, there will be 47 chromosomes after fertilization. Child is suffering from the Down syndrome. For this question, we also talk about the identical twins and the fraternal twins. So we can compare the sex and then any variation. For example, for the identical twins. For example, the identical twins, they have the identical genetic composition. However, they are female phenotype may be a bit different so we need to recall impact of the environmental factor on their phenotype